Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are doing an update today, our third one on the Zinwell ATSC 3.0 tuner. As you'll recall, this device was marketed as a way of watching encrypted DRM channels without the need for the internet. As we discovered in my initial review, that was not the case here in my area in Connecticut. I had to connect it to the internet to tune those DRM channels. Some people wrote in to say that they were able to do it without the internet. Needless to say, my experience was not what was marketed. And I wanted to also bring up their website because they do have product reviews on here. And I did post a review that was critical of the product for not meeting the advertised marketing and they did not post the review. So I would not trust all these five-star reviews. I think there are many others who are dissatisfied. But the reason why we are talking about this today is because there is a big update that they just pushed out and we're going to install it live here on the channel, at least recorded live uh, as we go. And this was the email that I got. Uh, one of the things they're promising here is for the update process to be simpler because what you're going to see is crazily complex, especially if you're, you're a 90-year-old grandmother trying to watch television. And they promise that that will be one thing that they clean up in this update. Additionally, they're going to bring the Android security level up to date because that was an issue that we pointed out in the prior video. The problem here is that you're going to have to frequently update this device because it has to run Android. And the reason it has to run Android is because of the DRM. So this is going to be an ongoing complexity that consumers are going to have to deal with. But we're going to take a look here and see what this update is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the Zinwell tuner here I purchased with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get to updating and see what this firmware update brings us. Uh, by the way, I've got this neat IR blaster that can send signals upstairs where the tuner is currently located from where I am down in the basement. I reviewed this the other day. It's really, really cool. So let's go and start the update process. Now I've got the instructions up here on screen. And the first thing I have to do is press the settings key on the remote. The problem is there are two settings keys, but you have to hit this one here on the left. So why don't we do that? And what that's going to do is pull up this Android screen here. Now what I have to do next is go over to apps, and then we're going to have to go over to apps download, which I don't see here. So I have to go to see all apps. There we go. So apps download. Again, picture your 90-year-old grandmother doing this. And then we have to go to open. And now I've got two choices here. So we're going to select the app updater, which it looks like I did. And let's see, so then we're gonna go to check system update. See, now I'm kind of going off course. Okay, so the updater 11.02. So we're gonna select this. I have to download this. And after I download this, I can then update it. So we have to now sideload <laughs> this update. I kid you not, this is the exact process that they're prescribing here. So now I do check system update. And it looks like there's a new version. So I can click on update immediately, I think. So it's going to run that, and then I think it will reset afterward. Now there's a two-step process, they said, so I think I have to do this one, and then I've got to do something else. So let me let this uh, finish up here, and when it's done, I will pick it up from the next step. All right, so the update is installed, and now we have to reboot the device here. And this screen's gonna turn blue because it is hooked up to an NDI video transmitter upstairs, but now we are rebooting and they did say this part might take two or three minutes to complete I guess it goes through a verification process to make sure that the update was successful so what I'm gonna do here is just let this finish up and I will tell you the results of the update so we don't have to sit here looking at the screen so stand by I'll be right back alright so now it is checking the update result and as I read ahead here in the instructions I'll put it back up on screen here uh, we are probably going to have to do another channel scan. So what I might do here is actually run upstairs and disconnect the Ethernet after it comes back up to see if those channels we had trouble with when we first got it still have trouble now because I would imagine everything's getting flushed out here. So let's uh, let this thing finish checking its update result and I will 
tell you what happens after it is completed. Oh, it looks like it's done here. So now we are booting up the app and I may not get back up there in time to <laughs> unplug the ethernet. Uh, but a couple of things I'm noticing here right after the update is completed, I'm finally getting a signal strength indicator now on the uh, screen here. So let's pull that up real quick if we can. So I'll hit the I button. Yeah, so that's a nice improvement there. All right, so let me get acclimated with this and let's take a look and see what else they've added on this update. So I did search around to see if there were any release notes. There were not, but one thing we can do to verify that the update was successful here is to go into the gear icon and go over to device preferences and click on about. And what we should see here now is a more up-to-date security patch, which is now February 5th of 2024 which is far better than the outdated one that was on there earlier. So at least the uh, update here did get us a more up-to-date operating system running under the hood here. And again, it's all Android here. Um, let's also take a look now that I ran upstairs and unplugged the Ethernet. If I can tune into my CBS affiliate, uh, which is an encrypted channel. So we'll try that real quick just to make sure the certificate that it downloaded has stayed intact. Uh, one thing that I did do is kept the box unplugged for about two and a half weeks and it did come right back up and could tune again without an internet connection. So I think whenever it gets that certificate, it's pretty much good to go here. So here it is tuning up. Not much better on the tuning side, maybe a little bit, but it does look like this box is probably a little more secure than it was a few minutes ago. Let me plug it back in here and let's take a look at the new update process. All right, if you can keep your eyes off the sparkly bunny here for a minute, what you have to do to update now is instead of pushing this button, you have to push this one. And what this will do when you're watching a TV channel is bring you into the next gen TV app settings. And we explored this in my initial review. Uh, what we're going to do now is go down to software update, which is a new feature here. And what we can do is go to the next gen TV app update, basically to update the app itself. And now these things load themselves up, but it brings us back to the same screen we were at before. Now, according to the instructions, this is the latest version of the app. So we don't have to update that. I think it got updated when we did the other thing. And let me go back in again and see what the other option is here. So it looks like what they did now is they took a step out of the process of getting to the updater. You can now launch it from the TV tuner app itself, but you get brought back to the same spot here. Now what's not clear is that if you still have to go through all the Android sideloading things to get these updates installed, because it really just drops us off on the app that we had to hunt around for earlier. So when the next update comes down, uh, we will take a look at that. So there you go, a quick update on the update for the Zinwell box here. And once again, we see just how complex ATSC3 is going to be for consumers because you're going to have to keep these things updated. You're going to have to run some kind of complex operating system like Android that needs to be patched all to meet the security requirements. On a related note, I wanted to point you at a video that the Antenna Man did the other day showing us that it's possible actually to get 4K content delivered over the existing ATSC 1.0 technology. I will put a link to his video down below in the video description. I was not aware this was possible, but it is. So do we even need this? Who knows? But the bottom line here is that the broadcasters are not walking away from encryption. It is adding complexity and frequent updates that have to be done on the consumer side. And I just can't see how this is going to be good for consumers in the end. I'll put a link down in the video description for our ongoing effort to get the FCC to wake up on this issue and block encrypting public airwaves. So if you are interested in participating and haven't yet, check out that link down below as well. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.